Let's go and solve some literal equations. In this video, I have an easy, a medium, and a hard. Now, I'm not gonna be able to cover every single type of literal equation that you might encounter, but I'm hoping at the end of this video, you're gonna have better knowledge of how to approach a literal equation, and maybe just to be able to solve it on your own. So, let's start with the very basic, build up that foundation, and then see how these problems turn from a little bit more difficult and a little bit more difficult, so therefore we know what to kind of look for. Now, the main idea with a literal equation, it's basically just going to be an equation with two or more variables. So you can see in this case, we have an x and a y. Now, I have a little semicolon here and the y, what that's telling us to do is we're gonna be solving for y. When I'm first ever teaching literal equations, and again, even if you are maybe forgot literal equations or maybe are brand new, this step might be helpful for you. The first thing, whenever I'm teaching, actually not literal equations, but actually just regular equations, I show students this little trick. It's just like the box trick. And what this does is this is going to cement the y right there. I'm not gonna move the y. All I'm gonna do is apply the inverse operations. Because again, literal equations, guys, is just like regular equations. They just have some extra variables in them. So we need to understand what is being applied to our variable, and we just need to undo them by using the reverse order of operations and the properties of equality. So, sorry, using inverse operations, reverse order of operations, and properties of equality. So let's go and count down what we have. We have a five times y, and we have an eight x that's actually being added to the negative five y. Some students kind of get confused on this, so let me show you what this would look like. Right, so what I want you to see is this is actually the exact same equation written just like this, right? So all I did was I just rearranged it, make sure this is a negative five y, remains the same, and I put that box around the y. And the, again, the reason why the box around the y is I'm not gonna move it, but I wanted, I had to sh move it one time just so you could see that this is a positive eight x. All right, so now let's use our inverse operations and reverse order of operations. The inverse operation of adding an eight x is going to be to subtract an eight x. Then I need to make sure I do it on both sides, which is my properties of equality. And then I have a negative five times y equals a negative eight x plus 10, because remember that's a positive 10, that's why I wrote the plus 10. And the reverse order of operations is telling me to always undo addition and subtraction first, then undo multiplication and division, which now you can see I have a negative five times a y, so I'm gonna divide by a negative five on both sides, and therefore I get a y equals negative eight over negative five is going to be an eight fifths x, and then 10 divided by negative five is going to be a minus two. Now what I want you to see is I don't need to keep the box in there because basically our goal has been achieved. I have now taken this equation and solved for y. So now that is going to be our literal equation, this equation, literal equation, solve for y. That's a very basic example, just following your inverse operations, reverse order of operations, and properties of equality. Now let's get into something that is a little bit more difficult. And in reality, the math about this is actually not more difficult than this problem. It does look a little bit more confusing though. We have a fraction, we have some subscripts, which a lot of students are not as familiar with, and we actually have just all variables. We only have one number, which is one half. So it's kind of like, what the heck? At least here, I kind of like recognize this from linear equations. What do I do here? So again, we need to solve for b2. Now, there's a couple things we could do. One thing that I, I like to stress with students is when solving multi-step equations is to get rid of the parentheses. So we can apply our operations to get rid of the parentheses. And you could do it in this problem, but I don't think that's gonna be our best use in this case. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna rewrite everything because we have a multiplication in front of the parentheses and a multiplication at the end. So remember, multiplication is cubic, so we can actually rewrite this as an a equals one half h times b1 plus b2. All right, there's two things we could do to get rid of this parentheses. We could either distribute the one half h into both of them, or we could just undo this multiplication of the one half, one half h times this parentheses, right? Times that expression. So how do we undo that? Well, we're gonna have to divide by a one half h on both sides. Now, here's where a lot of students will make their mistake because they forget about fractions. They're like, oh crap, how do I divide by one half? So let's just do a quick little review a divided by one half. If I wanna get rid of one half in the denominator, I can multiply by two over one, which is just gonna give me a two a. So remember, dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of one half is going to be two. So therefore, this is going to be a two a divided by h is now equal to, well, a b1 plus b2, well, guess what, guys? I don't really need the parentheses, right? Because the parentheses was only there to multiply by the one half h. So therefore, I can rewrite this as a b1 plus b2. And then again, just like we did over here, remember how I rewrote this as a positive 8x? That's telling me I'm adding that 8x to my variable. The same thing over here. I have a b2, well, it's being added by a b1. So to solve for b2, I'm gonna subtract a b1 
on both sides, and therefore I'm going to finally have a B2 is equal to a 2AH minus a B1. And voila. All right, so now let's get into some fun stuff. So we did some XY's, linear equation, and eh, not so bad, right? And then we got some ones that looks a little bit more confusing. It wasn't as bad, but we had some fractions, we had multiple variables, and now we're gonna get to this one, which is some good stuff, all right? Now, I usually like a lot of times with difficult ones is, you know, solve them in the denominator, but this one I chose A, and it doesn't really matter which one you're gonna go and choose. Actually, you know what? To be, yeah, we don't wanna choose B in this case. I don't wanna use B, I gotta use A, a different one in that, in that regard. So, but what I do wanna do is, let's go and solve for A. So for me to be able to solve for A, typically we like to get the variables to the same side, right? But before I can do that, I wanna kinda of get rid of this fraction. So to get rid of the fraction, I'm gonna multiply everything by 2B. Now, just remember, when you're multiplying here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I gotta put this in parentheses, right? Because I have to multiply 2B times both terms in that expression. So those are now going to divide out or divide to one. So I'll have an A minus one is equal to a 2B times a 2A minus B. Now, in this last example, instead of distributing, we divided on both sides, right? So therefore we could get what was in the inside, right? The problem with that is if I divide by two B on both sides, I'm gonna get back to exactly what I just had, right? I don't want that. So I'm gonna have to distribute and see what we come up with. Now I have expanded, I don't have parentheses anymore, but I have A on the left and the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything with, that contains an A to one side and everything that does not contain A on the other side. Okay, so here's where the difficulty comes in because students are so used to using inverse operations to solve literal equations. The way that this one's gonna be more difficult here is to, I have two A's, I can't solve for, I can't solve for both of those A at the same time. I need to get it down to one A. Well, I can't combine them because they're not like terms, but one thing I can do is I can factor out the A. By factoring out the A, that allows me to get one variable that I can now use my inverse operations to go ahead and solve. Now you can see my variable A is being multiplied by one minus four B, divide by that on both sides, and I have A solved. 